In this video, we're going to look at Detect3D as a design and evaluation tool for detector layouts. And for that, we're going to use one of the most powerful features of Detect3D, the Detector Ranking Tool. To demonstrate the power of the Detector Ranking Tool, I have a geometry here of an offshore structure, and as I zoom in, you can see I have defined a single fire zone. You can see the fire zone covers some pipe work and some other small structures. I've also defined eight flame detectors to provide the detector coverage, and you can see these highlighted with the labels. For each flame detector, we have an obstructed field of view, and in a reasonably complex geometry such as this one, we can see that the software has had to work pretty hard to calculate the obstructed field of view, casting around 200,000 rays for each detector, and for around a million triangle geometry such as this one, it takes around 4 seconds to calculate on a standard laptop. And you can see the accuracy of the obstructed field of view there, just panning around at the different angles. Now just as each detector has a complicated obstructed field of view, so we expect the coverage as well to be quite complicated in the zone. And we can take a first look at this with contours. I have one here at one meter above the zone level. And the red, green and yellow areas show that I've got pretty good coverage. If I just switch the geometry off we can see that more clearly. And looking at the coverage statistics we can see we've got 92% covered by one or more and 72% covered by two or more detectors. So overall we've got a pretty good layout, but the question really is, do we actually need eight detectors to cover this zone, or can we get equivalent coverage with fewer detectors? To answer this question, I'm going to use the detector ranking tool, which is accessed via the project menu, and I can select my fire zone. When the ranking tool loads, it generates a large data set by instantaneously switching off each detector in order, and calculating the effect that has on coverage. If you think about that process, any detector that you switch off, and it doesn't affect the coverage that much, is a poorly placed detector. And we can see the exact results of that process here in the detector ranking window. Each row is for one detector, and next to the detector we can see the 1 out of n deficit. That is how much the 1 out of n coverage was reduced by when this detector was switched off. The same thing is true for the 2 out of n coverage in the next column. The final columns show rankings of the 1 out of n deficit, the 2 out of n deficit, a weighted average of those deficits, and then the final ranking. In this case, we have an excess of 2 out of n coverage, so I'm going to bias the ranking to the 1 out of n deficit. So we now have the 1 out of n ranking, and we can see that Flame Detector 3 is the least effective detector for the 1 out of n coverage. If we click Show Ranking Labels, Detect3D highlights the detectors based on how effective they are. And we can see that in the main window with the red labels, all the way from the most effective, which is Flame Detector 6, to the least effective, which is Flame Detector 3. In this case, Detector 3 is so ineffective that it will only dock 1.4 percentage points from the 1 out of n coverage reducing it from 92.2% to 90.8%, still above the 90% target. In other words, the ranking tool is telling us that we can remove Detector 3 entirely. Instead of deleting it, which I could do, I'm actually just going to disable it, which effectively switches it off. Now that I've turned the Flame Detector 3 off, the simulation is just updating itself, and it's just completed, so we can have a look at the coverage. And as expected, it's 90.8% for the 1 out of n coverage, which is above our target of 90%, even though we switched off Flame Detector 03. I now updated the detector ranking results, and we can see now that our worst position detector is Flame Detector 08. Now if we take a quick look at Detector 8 in the main window, Maybe surprising that it's the worst place because it's right in the middle of the zone, but we can see it's pretty well obstructed by some large pipe work either side. The detector ranking results tell us that if we switch off this detector, it only reduces the 1 out of n coverage by 1.6 percentage points, so it's not very effective, and I'm going to switch that one off too. 
Once the simulation has finished updating itself and the ranking has also updated, we can now look at the new coverage results with Flame Detector 8 switched off. And as expected, we have 89.2% 1 out of N coverage, below our target of 90%, but not too far off. Now let's see if we can get the coverage back over 90% by repositioning a detector. The ranking tool says that detector 02 is now the least effective. Just for a sanity check on that result, we can have a look at flame detector 2 in the main window. And here it is. It is looking directly at some pipe work and also some structure as well. So I'm actually going to go ahead and disable that detector. And instead of moving it, I'm just going to add a new detector in its place. Now, while the detector ranking tool is very useful, it does not tell you where to put a new detector. So we need to look at the zero coverage ISO volume, and we can see a couple of blind spots here. We also know that detectors 6 and 7 have ranked particularly well on the ranking tool. Now I'm going to add the new detector as a replacement detector 02. Right click and select add flame detector, I'm going to call it flame detector 02 improved. I'm going to select the same model as I have for the other detectors in the simulation. I'm going to position the detector fairly close to detector 6, giving it a couple of meters of elevation. And then adjust the azimuth to 160 and the declination to 20 and update that to give me a preview of the detector location and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to add that to the project. You can see the ray casting is now complete. It's now just updating the coverage and all the contours and all that's done. I can now take a look at my updated zero coverage ISO volume and I can see the blind spots have reduced pretty well. I'm pretty confident of getting above 90% coverage. And I can see my new detector, the Improved Detector 2, now positioned here. If I take a look at the new coverage results for the zone, I can see that I do have greater than 90% coverage by one or more detectors. And this is a pretty significant result. I can just delete all the detectors that I switched off to get the final layout. And what I'm left with is coverage that exceeds my performance criteria of 90% one or more coverage and say 50% two or more. But instead of eight detectors, I now have six. So it's a 25% reduction in the number of detectors just from a quick analysis using the detector ranking tool in Detect3D. And this really shows the power of the software, not just as a coverage analysis tool, but as a design tool that enables engineers to design firing gas detector layouts where every single detector is positioned effectively. So thanks very much for listening, and if you have any questions about this video or want to inquire about Detect3D, please email me at the address listed above, or you can download Detect3D by registering on insightnumerics.com.